Hello everyone. Hope you're having a wonderful day today. My name is Titi from Bethel Community Church. I serve in the prayer ministry and I've been uh, part of the team that's been meeting to pray on Zoom weekly for the prayer requests that have been coming in. And we've been really grateful and encouraged even by the praise reports that have come in. I want to encourage you to please continue to write us at prayer at BethelWPG.com. We are always willing to receive your prayers and to support you in this way. Today I had a scripture in mind that I wanted to share with you. It's taken from Jeremiah 29. I've been before, if you've been keeping up with my posts, you would know that I've talked a little bit about Jeremiah 29 verse 11. But today, the scripture I'm taking in is from verse 13. That verse says, If you look for me in earnest, you will find me when you seek me. I will be found by you. This was part of the letter that Jeremiah wrote to the Israelites when they were um, taken into captivity. And there was something about learning to seek God in all earnesty. I wonder what that means. I think sometimes it suggests that when we seek God, sometimes we're not really earnestly seeking Him. I liken it to trying to have a conversation with someone across your table, if you have a teenager. Even some of us oldies are bad now. You have your cell phone, and you're trying to keep up the conversation with whoever is across the table from you, and you're also distracted talking on the cell phone. So much so that in many homes you have to say, please put down your cell phone so that we can have a real conversation. I believe this is what God was saying here. I want to have a real conversation with you. I don't want to have this thing that we have where you are somewhat distracted. Well, what are the things that we would say would be our distractions? Sometimes our minds are just running on so many different levels. We've got concerns for our children, concerns about our work. We've got a whole list of grocery, a grocery list of things that we need to do all day that we just want to get through the prayer. And you know what? I've done what I'm supposed to do. And now I can go on with my day. And we're not really earnestly seeking to hear what God has to say. I can't imagine what it would be like for you if you were trying to talk to someone and have a, a, um, a, a conversation with someone and they said all that was on their heart and then they hung up the phone on you or they just got up and walked away. I mean, really, you're not interested in what I have to say to you? God is saying, please, if you seek me, seek me earnestly and you will find me have things in my heart too that I have to say to you. If you seek me with all of your heart, you will find out some things that I have to say to you. So a good example for us is a man, a prophet called Habakkuk. And so you'd find him in Habakkuk chapter 1 and chapter 2. So um, in chapter 1, he had a lot of questions um, to God. He says, I am surrounded by people who love to argue and fight. The law has become paralyzed and useless. And the justice given in the courts, there's no justice given in the courts. This is These are the things he's talking to God about. He's asking God, like, what do you think about this? So he's making his complaints. And in chapter 1, verse Five, God replied him. God told him, um, look at the nations and be amazed. Watch and be ast not astonished at what I will do. And he had a lot of things to say. 
So we go on to Habakkuk, actually, chapter 1, but going on to um, verse 12, he had another complaint. He says, God, is this your plan in all of this to wipe us out? He's complaining also about the fact that they were in captivity in Babylon. Is this your plan? Are you planning to wipe us out? He sounds just like the kind of questions we were probably asking. God, is this your plan for the virus to wipe us out? There have been so many people that have lost their lives. Like a real and honest question. He had quite a bit of questions. But he was saying, is our life not precious? Surely you must have a plan. But what was so intriguing was the fact that he said, I will now climb up to my watchtower and wait to see what the Lord will say to me and how he will answer my complaint. He sounds like a friend that comes in, into my home to have a conversation with me and says, well, Titi, I'm not leaving until I have some answers to all these questions. Habakkuk is saying to God, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving until I have answers to all my questions. Now, that's someone that has a relationship. I'll have to say that when I pray, and perhaps even you, that we just laid all out, all that's in our heart, and then we pack up our bags and we just keep on going. We are not like, I am not leaving God until I've got an answer to the request that I have before you. It might mean that we don't really think that we can get an answer. And here's Habakkuk, ready to plant himself down and wait. I don't know how long he was willing to wait, but he was willing to wait to see and hear what God has to say to him. Perhaps God will show him some pictures. Perhaps he would hear a song in his heart. Perhaps he will see a vision. He just knew that in all these complaints, I need to hear from my Father in heaven. I want you to be like that. When it comes to your prayer time, I want your prayer life to make a shift. I want my prayer life to make that shift. That every time I come, that I would be able to be willing to say, I'm going to wait. I'm going to see what you have to say to me. Because this relationship needs to be real. You know, when we worry about our friends and loved ones that maybe do not know God, they want to know what we know about him. And we don't get to say to them, well, we don't really know him either. We want to know him. So I pray that especially in this time of the pandemic, when we are not able to put too much into our schedule, we're not able to go shopping, do our hair and all these other wonderful things we, we were used to filling up our time with, that we might find time in our very busy schedule to be able to wait and hear what the Father has to say to us. I want to really encourage us in this so that we might actually be able to walk away from that conversation, just like we would walk away from a friend that we just had a conversation with, with more knowledge, with more insight as to what was really going on. That is a, a privilege that we have as the children of God. There are people that are far from him, that don't even know him, but we that have been brought near, we want to know him more. So I hope that word blesses you, and I hope it, it gives you a new determination. Habakkuk was told when God was going to answer him, God, Habakkuk was told, says, well, go get a piece of paper. Write whatever I'm going to tell you down. And I think that sounds like a journal. I want you to consider getting a journal. That every time you go before God, he would write, and you would say, what if I made this request before my father today, and I'm going to wait to see what he has to say to me. And when he says it, I will write it down. That I'll be sure to be able to say, it was this song that came to me. It was this scripture that came to me. It was this vision that came to me. These were the thoughts that came to me. 
something needs to happen to me. A change needs to happen in our relationship with the Father. Become richer and stronger and more personal. Amen. So let us just take a moment and pray. Certainly we have a lot of things to pray for. But many times we don't take a moment to pray for ourselves. Let us pray for help in this. It says, let the weak say, I am strong in the Lord. We need to be stronger in this area of our lives. We can admit that we're weak, but we're going to ask him for strength today. Strength to be able to walk a, a little closer with him. To be able to hear his heart, even as we share our hearts with him. Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you, Lord, for these examples of people, prophets that have walked with you, that had real, a real relationship with you. Lord, they, they had such relationships that they were able to sit down and write the letters of this Bible. And Lord, we want to be ones that know what you're saying. We don't want to be afar from you. We want to be brought near. Lord, we thank you. Thank you that you, you are willing to hear us out. Even as we've come daily and many times we've been there, but we have been guilty of maybe just saying all that's on our heart and walking away, not even giving you a chance to say what you have in mind. But today, Lord, we want to begin to listen. We want to begin this journey of listening with you. And Father, we pray that you would strengthen our resolve so we will not give up. Lord, we've had prayers for those who have been ill. Lord, we ask that you start to speak to us so we would have words of encouragement that we can give to them. I want to pray for those who've lost their jobs. Pray you, we would be able to listen and hear your words that we can use to encourage them as well. Father, we pray for the things that baffle us, situations that's going on all around us that we have no answers for. But we know the God that has all the answers. We pray, Lord, for a heart that listens to hear what you would have us say to the people around us that are also full of questions but don't have the privilege of knowing you. Thank you, Father, that you hear our prayer today. And thank you, Lord, that we will hear from you. Help us to quiet our hearts when we come to you, that we may be able to hear your voice when you speak to us. We give you all the praise and all the glory, Lord, for the changes you are going to make in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I pray that this time has blessed you, even as he has blessed me. And um, I pray that you would start to see the changes. Please feel free to drop us a line. When you start to hear words from God, scriptures that come to your mind. If you have any questions at all, like I said, write us at prayer at BethelWPG.com. Well, be blessed and stay safe.